You're listening to Racing Future Radio. Here's your host, Mr. Dennis Mills, with this week's guest, Mr. John Snowman. So, John, here you are um, uh, running your your own operation here in Ontario, judging all over the world, uh, lecturing at uh, Texas A&M, and uh, then one day you get a phone call. Uh, from uh, the leadership of the province saying, uh, hey, we have a challenge here. Tell, tell us about that. What well, happened? I, I actually got a phone call from an <laughs> irate uh, minister of agriculture, Ted McMeekin. Uh, I wrote a column in the Toronto Sun uh, when SARP, when the Slots at Racetracks program was cancelled, or at least was announced that it was going to be cancelled, and I, I, I wrote a rather scathing column. You'll know that it's a, a columnist to uh, get paid for saying scathing things, so I, I did that. I fulfilled my obligation. Uh, I got a call from Ted, who I, you know, I've long admired Ted. He's a great guy. He called me and, you know, took me to task for the column, and I, I teased him a little bit about it, and, and uh, we kicked it around a little bit. And I said at the end of the call, Ted, you know I'm serious, that this is really going to be truly devastating for, for the horse racing business and really for the whole equine industry here in Ontario. And he said that's not what his officials had told him, and that's not the briefing they had. And I said, well, you know, I think there may be something wrong with your briefing. And he suggested we need to talk about that uh, more, and we did. And as you'll know, a couple of weeks later, the province did something very unusual. They put together this odd panel of uh, of three former ministers from all three parties, Elmer Buchanan, obviously, John Wilkinson, and myself, and and asked us to have a look uh, at what the effects of canceling slots at racetracks would be on the industry and and really on how we could get the industry in, in better shape. So that was the challenge we took on. Well, the uh, the journey that uh, your panel took on was uh, it was quite a, mo- a monumental task because the uh, the pain and the frustration in in the sector from especially rural Ontario uh, was quite profound and a lot of people thought they were going to lose their farms and their homes and everything else and so tell us uh, what you did to immediately stabilize the uh, sort of uh, community that were going to be most affected by this ex- uh, cancellation of the slots at racetracks. Well, yeah, you know, look, like any other industry that goes through huge change and really fast, there's a lot of devastation for people. I mean, and, and, and particularly, and, and maybe the racehorse industry is a bit different than some other industries, and that it's truly about a lifestyle. And so when people have more than just the economics uh, at risk, they had really a lifestyle, and sometimes a lifestyle that had been going on for two, three, four generations in a family. So this really gets to the heart and soul of people when you, when you threaten that. We gave, I hope, uh, good advice to the government uh, immediately and, and suggested that their uh, estimates of what would happen to the industry without the slots revenue was not well founded. You know, there was, they needed to have another look at the economics, but also that they needed to uh, look at what size industry was sustainable in Ontario, what the public side of supporting that industry needed to look like. Look around the world, racing is supported by the public in one form or another, either from gaming revenues or sometimes direct subsidies to the industry because it's an important employer. And uh, we made point by point our case with the government to uh, go into some long-term programs that would help stabilize and grow the industry. And so that's kind of where we are right now. But uh, your, your process of gathering all of this information uh, was long and detailed. To tell us a little bit about how you interfaced with uh, the leadership or the grassroots to sort of gather the information you needed to make your report? Well, sure, there was really, from my personal point of view, there were two ways we did this. One, we had meetings with everyone who had an interest in the uh, future of the horse racing industry. And that's the full breadth of, um, you know, from owners and trainers and, and grooms and the whole the, uh, tracks, obviously, all of the all of players who are involved in racing. So we had those formal uh, meetings And, uh, you know, with industry associations and with individuals. And then the informal side of it was all the phone calls that came into my house from, you know, I live right in the middle of horse country. We have a farm in Georgetown. So and lots and lots and lots of friends who've been in that business forever. And and so um, the the back channel stuff was uh, lots and lots of friends calling me and telling me, here's how this is impacting you know, our operation, here's how it's impacting the people that we know, um, and kind of here's what we need in order to grow this industry. So we had both formal input and we had kind of informal input. Uh, John, thank you so much for your uh, support, your dedication, and uh, good luck. Keep it going. Hope to have you back soon. All right. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. 
You've been listening to Racing Future Radio with your host, Mr. Dennis Mills. This week's guest was Mr. John Snowblin. Snowblin.